Hey Americans, this man knows where your tax dollars have been going and what they're being used for. Uh, you are not going to believe the story he's going to tell you today. When he came in here telling me, I was like, what? Are you, you've got to be kidding me. How do you, how do you know this? <laughs> And so, uh, for those of you who watch the channel, I don't get off on a lot of subjects like these. I don't do a lot of guests, but this guy's interesting. And he can get away with telling you the story because I'm that, I would be considered the, the white Christian American male that's not supposed to have an opinion these days, right? Yeah. Now, you have got a little different background. Yes, I do. Why don't you, Melvin, if you will tell everybody like where you're from, your background, your history. All uh. right. Melvin, my name. I'm from Puerto Rico, born and raised in Puerto Rico. Habla español, sí. Habla español, muy bien. Um, I was, I came here to the United States in the year 2000. I've uh, been working, I have, I'm a single father with two kids. And I work in, in, in the bank. I, well, I don't work there anymore. I used to work in the bank. Now you get ready to move. He made a decision to move. Yeah, I'm moving back home, which is Nevada. Yeah. Um, what do you want to know? So you have been in the banking industry for a while. Yes. Um, and that's where this, you know, sometimes we have to be in the right industry to find out the right things. Correct. I, 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 I'm not going to sit here and talk about it. The, <laughs> the, the things that I've been involved in, I can just tell you this week, uh, not the Trump thing, right? I've been involved in, uh, an active shooter scenario and, um, I've been personally involved in a death threat. And uh, that involves two other people. Uh, I have been in the security business, for those of you who watch the channel, 22 years. Um, I think people are coming unhinged. Mm -hmm. I, feel like, I feel like people are coming unhinged, um, which is good for my business, except for when you have some nutbag like we're dealing with now. Um, that's not me, though, by the way. That's not you. That's not you. Definitely not you. But the, I do run across, like, I've got people that I, I'm, trying to, I'm trying to convince them to interview. And I want to get to your, your stuff. I, I think people are going to be shocked by what you have to say. <laughs> But I've got other people that I've tried to get in front of the camera, and they really have a hard time. I mean, their their jobs, like one of them is an ATF agent. Um, the things I've learned and the discussions we've had are just amazing. Um, and i got to tell you, for those of you that hate the ATF, uh, are there some frustrations and problems that Americans and companies should have with the ATF? I think rightfully so. Uh, however, you got to understand there's a lot of great people in the ATF. They stop a lot of human trafficking. A lot of guns, illegal guns and firearms lead to those people that are trafficking stuff illegally. So, you know, it's kind of like there's this old saying, old American saying, don't throw out the baby with the bathwater, right? You know, the bathwater is dirty. We don't pitch the baby out the window. It's an old, you've heard that one? That's an old, old saying, right? Okay. That's an old American saying. New one to you. Um, but, but you know, you, 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 you really have got to learn to disseminate between what's good and what's bad. And there's a lot of good people in the ATF. That's my opinion. For those of you that hate the ATF, I'm sorry. Um, my experiences have been, been okay. So, um, but I would love to have this guy come interview. I'm going to try, try to get him again because, man, some of the stuff he knows is just incredible. But, Melvin, so yes. you came in today is, uh, today's Thursday. About a week ago. Came in about a week ago. And you started telling me a story about um, some of these immigrants coming in, mm -hmm. open up bank accounts mm -hmm. at the bank. I will not tell you which bank, but we're not talking about a mom and pop bank. We're not talking about, you know, we're not talking about the credit union that your mama got you involved in because she was a teacher. Nothing wrong with those, right? We're talking about one of the top 10 banks in the U.S., sure. right? I won't give you which number bank because you told me which number it was. Come on. <laughs> If I gave that away, it's, it is one of the top 10 banks in the U.S. It's not number 10, I'll tell you. So it's really about the top. Yeah. Huge bank. Um, and the money that our government is giving to them and doing it, it sounds like through back doors. Yeah. It's freaking incredible. Yep. Like, I don't know how they're getting away with this. So you, I don't want you to kind of, like, you said people are coming in with, like, just a driver's license to open up an account? No, How does not, that work? Not even that. Um, we call them in the banking industry, it's called NRA, non-resident aliens. Non-resident aliens. Yes. Yeah, so uh, basically all they have to have is a passport from their country. 
Okay. And a second ID, like a driver's license from their country, nothing from the U.S. Did it have to be a U.S. issued? No, nothing. No. Can, 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 I, can I stop you a second? Oh, yeah. So, okay. so uh, Melvin knows this, and the, the viewers know. We have a contract with the Department of Justice. Well, that's not editing true. Let me back up. I'm a subcontractor through one of our companies for the Department of Justice, Department of Homeland Security, and the FBI. We do background checks for. You've been in here when it's just crazy, right? Mm -hmm. Well, upwards of. 80 people a day, some days more than 80 people. So when somebody comes in, there's certain requirements that they have to have. One of them for the FBI is a bank account. So uh, with certain credentials, you they can start piecing this together. So to open a bank account, they don't need anything U.S.? No. Okay. I'm sorry to interrupt you. No, no, no. They don't need anything U.S. They only <clears throat> need some money to, put, to open the account, and that's it. No social, no US ID, no tax ID, nothing. No no social and no tax ID? Nothing to open a bank account. So what's the reference number? Is it off of the passport? Nothing. Black. Nothing. Okay, I didn't, I didn't hear this the other day. No reference number? Nothing. So there's no way to track tax for tax purposes for RS? Yeah. There's no way to know how much money is there. And this people these people are very hard working and I respect those people because they come here to work they have two three four hundred five hundred thousand in their accounts with no tax ID hold on hold on two three four five hundred thousand yeah. dollars yeah and that's not one that's quite a few holy crap you know, a minute hold on a minute ago for this you were saying like a lot of these people come in they've been here for a couple months they have well the, uh, the ones that you said they've been here for like 10 15 years but they still have no uh, no social no ID they go to their country, they get their ID renewed, or they go to Atlanta, which is the, they have the um, the place where they can go to get their ID renews. Yeah. And that's it, they keep opening accounts. They like renew, that. they stay, put the money away, and, and there's no you can tax have, ID to you associate can open with your a business account without a tax ID. Oh. You're freaking, so what's, what's the reference number? There's. Nothing U.S. Right associated. Now, right now, you can get a tax ID for a business uh, without anything. You can do it online. It takes five minutes. They don't even ask you anything. I am stunned. Yeah. Okay. So. <laughs> okay. So I, 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 I'm, I'm, I'm trying to process this. I did not hear this. And I tell, and I know because I opened hundred, hundred twenty accounts of a month for the past two and a half years so yeah and you get to and you i'm sure you've been very valuable because you are able to you know speak spanish yeah, yeah, yeah. From yeah. Central and South i was very very about you know i have a line waiting for me all the time la oportunidad de trabajar en ese país es, es muy uh, fácil cuando soy uh, hablar en español sí. it is it is so i speak well, spanish it, it is at some extent it's not that's another story to tell okay so let me get back to this to this this money so you said that a lot of these and uh they they have checks and the checks come from is it a non-profit or well i don't really know where it is come from he said it's from a church that has a business account with us but uh, one of the clients that I had one day, he told me that they went to, when they when they cross over the border, they stop them in the border and they give them the paper to get the residency because they do it right there, there in the border. And then they tell them to go to, the, to an agency and the agency tell them to go to this church. And they're getting between 1200 bucks and $1,800 a month per person. And sometimes there's four, five, six people there. And, and it, now, I want to make sure that I understood this right. Twelve to eighteen hundred dollars per person a month. Is that is that multiple families? A lot of people from the same church? No, no. There's people that just cross two days ago, three days, six months ago. This is so. Not, this is a pre-designed fund that somebody that, knows it's going to go. I to have Harvard. no idea where that money's coming from. No idea. So this sounds like to me. It sounds like 
the laundering of American money through it civilization like to go to illegal aliens coming. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a church, which I get it. They're trying to help the people, and I get that. You know, yeah, and that's okay. But and most of these people that come in from another countries, they, some of them, they do are hard workers. They're good people. And I respect those people because they get up quick and they become, you know, they become taxpayers and they do everything like they're supposed to. But there's some other people that have been here for two, three years and they're still collecting the same amount of money, doing nothing, and still getting food stamps with nothing. You know, and I'm in, like, I was telling him that I went, I saw a customer that's been here for six months. I went to his account because he's lost his debit card and he had $10,000. And I asked him, do you work? Because I know I don't work. And so where do you get this money? Oh, this is all the money they give me. So really, $10,000. And I'm like. That's more money than you probably have in your account. Or I'm your like, checking account. I might have it in my checking account. I'm like, okay. It's not, it, that actually, I'm, I'm Hispanic. And I can say it because I'm Hispanic. That pissed me off. Period. Because I work, I used to work in that company 50 hours a week. Work hard. Ne nonstop for me to not have, not even have money to buy food. It's just, and then you go ask for help for the government and they deny you because you make too much money. It's like, okay, so you want me to stop working and then you can help me? It's better to just become a vagabond. That's why I'm like, oh. I don't get it. But so you know Bobby that runs a gun shop. Mm -hmm. We've made this joke for for years and, uh, and it's really, I mean, it's it's kind of a sick joke, but it's a funny joke. People come in, they're like, you know, they, they're supposed to get a background check done for something. Well, they don't have proper ID or they have half the ID. They might have a driver's license, but a driver's license is not enough if you're trying to do the federal side. You have to have some other proof of citizenship. Yeah. So we make this joke. We say, hey, you know, we know how to get you through this process. Just go down to Texas, swim across the Rio Grande, walk about a mile up, swim back across the Rio Grande and claim, claim asylum, you know, claim that you're... Uh, and then the thing is, I know these immigrants that come to the border, they go through a lot of things, a lot of bad things. I met a girl yeah. that she's Cuban. She came to the border and you know, the Cuban has, they can get political asylum or some, some, some other forms. They can get into the country legally, but they still have to cross the country to the border, which it makes it difficult for them. This woman told me, he, he told me he got raped, she got raped twice, and I get it. It's, it's, it's horrible for these people, but what I do not like is the way that the real, the, the people who pay the taxes, the people who works every day, who wakes up at five in the morning every day, take, up, take care of his kids, go to work, come back, the same thing, do it over and over every day. They don't have money, I don't have money to buy groceries. You know, and it's like, I if you gonna get a job, if you come here to tell me you're gonna get a job, and I have helped a lot of immigrants get work jobs, because I believe if you come here, you come here to work, you're gonna here to get better. You wanna live the American dream is, one part of the American dream is working. Mm -hmm. You're not gonna leave from the social security or from the food stamp or anything like that. And I'm like, no, it's just, if you are willing to be here two years without a job, still collecting that help from that church, which is wrong, and still have more money than people that work, people that have jobs full times, that's bullshit. Well, there's no way Excuse for- me, my friend. There's no way for America, America to sustain continuing to do that. Uh, I'm going to put a link down below. Have you ever seen Immigration Explained in, in Gumballs? <laughs> Have you no. seen it? No. It's really good. Immigration Explained in Gumballs. Google it. Look it up. Look it up on YouTube. It's a great video. But there's a point where um, it becomes un it just becomes unsustainable. Not only for the company, uh, company, not only for the country giving up people to this country, uh, because usually the ones that have some means are the ones that get out because they have a way to pay for passage, pay for a plane, pay for a boat, pay for a smuggler. Like they're usually the ones that have some means, are the ones that get out. A lot of those people are usually educated. In the United States, if we continue to support them, um, the system breaks. 
And a lot, you know, a lot of people don't like. I was dumb enough to get involved in politics back in 2012. I ran for a federal office, and uh, it was an interesting experience. But um, I really did learn some things then about um, the finances of the U.S. and how people are brought in. But what most people do not realize, there are eight, eight criteria, which is close to the number bank that is. Eight criteria. <laughs> There's eight criteria. Um, for someone to become a legal immigrant, a legal, doing the process the way you should, coming into the United States. And those eight criteria were put in place not to put really, really restrictions on those coming in, but if you look at it as if you can meet these eight criteria, and anybody can do it, like anybody can meet the eight criteria, it sets them up for success. I mean, one of those is just a basic understanding of the English language which we have these they which be, which 90% of the immigrants do not speak they don't. English. I can lick of English. Like I was I saw my barbecue the other day to a, to an immigrant and I started speaking English and he's like I don't speak in any any English like and I I responded in Spanish I said, how long have you been in this country? Oh, I've been here for 30 years and you don't speak English? Come on, my man. Wow. So you set people up for failure when they can't get a job and they can't speak the language. The other is the basic history of the country. I mean, you know when you know what country that, that, that you're moving to. Uh, the other is you can't, within a short, short period of time, commit any misdemeanors or felonies. You can't oh, have no, any crimes. Yeah, that's, that's There's all the, the, and these are reasonable the things, right? That's out the window. Um, you know, when the, all this border thing happened a couple months ago, um, one, of, one of my, I have a friend who was a, uh, an immigrant, and he's a resident now because he crossed, he crossed for the visa and he did all the right things to do it. So he's gonna be citizen next in two, he had to wait two years. One of his buddies crossed from the border back when that mess was in, guess what? He's already a citizen. No way. His buddy, my buddy called me the other day and said, hey, you know what? This guy had the, he had, he already got the citizen. She's like, what? And I have to wait two and a half years. And I did everything right. Wow. Well, I met this guy who owns... I'm like, and then there's other people who's like, oh, I'm a resident. I've been here for two, for a year and a half. Like, how the hell do you do that? And people, they actually pay the money to the government because there's, for example, my mom, she used to be a, a, a federal judge, so she's retired now, but she now is sponsoring people from other countries to come up in, in the U.S. and establish a life. And she's doing the right things. So she's sponsoring people, and she brings her, she gives her a place to stay. That's one of the eight criteria, have a yeah. sponsor, yeah. So, and then she gives her a place to stay, and they get a social, and then they do all that, but they have to do it. But that process for them to complete and become citizen, it takes five to six years. And when an immigrant cross the, cross the border, when an immigrant cross the border, some of these you keep talking. I'm gonna take this. I know who this is. Some some of these immigrants they it, it can take from a year, a year and a half, two years to be residents, which is crazy. I think it's ridiculous. If you're here to work, if you're here to do good, to make this country better, I have no problem. But if you're here to leave off the government and commit crimes like those kids <laughs> that poor girl and and i was pissed you you have no place being here you have no place being here and you have no place and then you have no forgiveness for my for my eyes because i've been here for i mean i was born 24 years i was born you're a citizen puerto rico is a u.s territory right. so we are born you're a citizen but i've been here in the states 24 years and i have where i have never stopped working never and I work my ass off. I don't complain. I just work, 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 work. But if you're here to just do whatever you think, you think is the best now. So I was I'm gonna sorry. tell a story a minute ago. No, it's frustrating. It's, and it's, it's emotional it's, for a lot of people too. It's pissed me out. It's just, I was gonna say, there's a guy I met who owns three car lots in Nashville. Um, and I think, I think he was from Guatemala. Uh, but he was, he was either from Central South America, but it seemed like he said he was from Guatemala. Said he'd been here 23 years. It took him 16 years to get his citizenships. 
and he was sending money back and forth. Now this entire time he was working, he started off working for a car lot, you know, fixing cars, had a single car lot, then he expanded to three car lots. And he said, I cannot tell you how pissed off I am that I meet all these immigrants who have been here for two or three years and they've gotten their citizenship. He said, I sent money home, I worked my ass off, I went through the process. He said, now this is what freaked me out. He said, I still have family that I can't get up here. Yep. 23 years, still has family that he can't yep. get up here, going through the legal process. So, you we you know, it's the same thing that we do when, when we give people uh, a lot of money for having too many children out of, out, out of wedlock. We encourage bad behavior. Same mm -hmm. thing when we're making people citizens who come across the border without any well, regard This policy they have with the, that they have right now with the border open is just ridiculous because I think it needs to, they need to force the people to do the background checks, to do the visas, to find the sponsor, you know, to do the right thing so that when, when the, whoever comes here is really, is really a good, a, a good piece to the puzzle that is this country to make, make it better, not make it worse because well we already know that a lot of the money from social security is being used to to, to pay people to have housing those type mm. of things that's been on mainstream media um you know melvin doesn't know exactly where some of the money and the checks are coming from these churches where that money originates you should i, I try to check the account and it's and it says it's locked even for me so i couldn't even see interesting tra yeah so you know, transactions so when something happened like that it's basically it's, but the money transfers it's not only that, it's just, um, it's an account and I received millions of dollars at a time and it's a, it, it's called analyzed accounts. So it's a high tier business account, which you see that on the big business account. When in a church with that account like that, I don't know. We would certainly love to know where all of those funds come from, uh, but we're not going to crack that today. Not today um, or anytime soon. When are you when are you taking off out of town? When are you leaving? Thirty first. Thirty first. Man, you're gone pretty soon. Mm -hmm. Today's eighteenth. Mm -hmm. That's well, why I was back in. <laughs> I got you. I got your number. I'll stay with you out there in, in Vegas. Maybe yeah. we can do some remote stuff too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, have a guy who's gonna try to. Hey, if you want to help us with YouTube videos? Let us know. I don't know how to do the remote thing. I've been shown two or three times, and I'm just too dumb to pick it up. I, actually, I'm too busy to pick it up. I, I do technology, but I do yeah, different kind of technology. No, you're, busy, you're a busy man. I'm busy. No, we can do something. We could probably do something. And, uh, and you know, I, they, in Vegas, there's a few uh, uh, gun builders, so. Maybe we can, you know something? So we can. We'll talk about some franchising and some business. We got some We got some things cooking in business that'd be fun to do. Yeah, and Vegas. there's some gun, gun companies over there that we can, you know. They like guns in Vegas? They like guns in, in Nevada? That, why do you think I'm moving back to Nevada? <laughs> <laughs> Look, y'all, thank you for tuning in. Uh, do us a favor, like and subscribe. Uh, maybe we'll have some more information to get to the bottom of this. I have, I have some other friends that work in the banking industry. I'll probably reach out to them too and find out what's going on. And, uh, and it's not the only bank. No. It's There's not. one bank out there is giving credit cards. Oh, yeah, yeah. Load it up. With people Debit cards. With no, no, credit cards. Credit cards. Oh, crap. Not the debit cards. No, credit. I knew about the debit cards. No, credit card. That's a uh, bank. That, it's not the same bank I used to work with. It's a bank that is giving credit oh, card to NRAs. Gracious. So, I'm going nice. to say, I, I know the manager there, so I'm going to talk to her. El jefe del banco. Mm-hmm. La, o la jefa. La jefa. La jefa. La jefa de banco. Uh, my Spanish is pretty bad. Y'all, thank you for tuning in. Uh, I'm going to put a couple links below. I'm going to tag a couple other channels that do some of the same stuff. One of my buddies has a studio here in Nashville. He's going to try to get me to shoot some videos in so we can do better quality stuff for you. But there's so much you just can't cover it all. And um, this is not one of my normal topics, but it does affect every single American. Yes. Thanks for tuning in.